All right, this is um, the page flip tutorial. I'm going to fly through it pretty quick and just to show you the basics. So if you've not already saved your pages as JPEGs in the right file size, you're going to be doing it through Photoshop. I'm presuming you all know how to use this new open up an A5 size one. Um, I would select transparent just for the easy use but the resolution is the main one you have to drop it down to 72 resolution because that suits all screen output size it's not much point having it larger than that because you're just taking up um, sort of file size okay so you click OK you open up your blank you can create your pages there and then file save as or save for webbing devices under under JPEG Okay, um, I'll just show you one that I've made previously. Okay, so you go. Just a quick color background change with the numbers on, just to show each page there. So, like I said, all I've done is um, save for webbing devices, select the right quality size, or and saved it into a folder. I'll just move this across so you can see it. So you can change your quality size there and then click save and it'll ask you to put the name in. And you can just click save in the right area. Okay, um, now that's done, you should have your four pages as you can see I've already got there. Um, just cancel out these. Right, so now you've got these images up, you can open InDesign what you have to do is open up a document format move this across so and remember you're working in A5 size so you can select that and remember the number of pages you're working to um, which is the main consideration you can add more in the actual program when you get there if you've not done that um, change these margins if you want it just creates a board around the edge um, so as you're not putting artwork too close to the sides uh, you can change to landscape as well which might give you a better looking sort of page flip thing for a portfolio type thing I'll just click OK OK so here you go um, you've got these panels at the side the main ones you're going to be dealing with is pages and uh, page transitions um, if they're not there you can open up in this window thing pages there and interactive for your page transitions you just select them and they'll pop up here so we'll open up the pages one you'll need this panel open basically to help you go through these things and all you have to do with your save jpegs is file and place so select your pages page one uh, you see it comes up with a rough small image you can place it directly in the corner I'll just place it offset slightly just to show you so it's still selected here you can see you've got these on the top toolbar here and um, got a line to page it's usually set to a line to selection so select a line to page um, and then you can center it using these two here so there you go as simple as that click the next one file place <coughs> Second one, okay, because it's set. Okay, well that's file place third. Ah, now I see sometimes this happens. Um, if this happens to you, it's because you've not deselected the previous page. So, what you can do is edit, undo, replace, and then click at the side. Uh, to stop that happening next time you have to click off it before you place this next page in so you see it's not selected so select it and we'll just center this one page four anyway that, that's your four pages done what you now have to do to this is assign the page transitions to these uh, the quickest way of doing this is in this panel box there's a drop down menu it's it's fairly hidden away. Uh, just click on that. Come up with a load of options. Go to the page transitions and choose. 
and this will apply it to all these uh, pages that you got there. So you roll over, you can see different transitions if you want to try different effects. I mean, you don't have to do the page turn, but I think it's the most effective one here. Um, so we'll click on page turn. You see, you can only export that one to a, a flash file as well. So um, click OK. And if you go back to the pages, you'll see they've got all these little icons by them now. So that shows there's a transition applied to these pages. So the next thing you have to do is just file and export. Select the save as file type SWF, which is a flash format. Choose the name of your uh, file you want to save it as and select the correct area. And then just click save. I'll just replace this you now. So, got a few options here you can mess around with um, if you want to see what they, they all do in your own time. Um, the main options you got here, sometimes that will be selected generate HTML file, which will create a holding page for your flash file. So, it will create two files a, a HTML file and your SWF file. Um, if you want to view the SWF file, you can click on the HTML web page and that will open up your SWF inside. Uh, might be quite handy if you're wanting to do your own site and stuff, but um, I'll just select it anyway just to show you. Um, change your settings to sort of reduce the file size. You might need to do that if you've got a lot of pages at um, a sort of bigger size than A5. Um, We'll leave it as high as just to leave the quality on and click OK. See, it's just created the files there quickly. And we can go to our own folder. You'll see there's a HTML web page and that's your SWF file. So I'll just click this open. I might have to resize it just to view in your window. Uh, I've got a few title bars on, but anyway, it gives you the gist. You can see the page turning in here. Um, I have had to record this at a smaller screen size than you'll probably be using, so um, just to give you the effect. So that's the HTML page and the SWF on its own. I'll just click, move this so you can see it's there. Because we saved it as view at 100%. It won't resize the actual movie within this border when you resize the, the frame. So you can actually see the pages going up and up, above and below. Um, if you'd set to resize, it would have scaled up to fit into the windows um, size as well, which isn't as good an effect, especially for the PDF thing if you wanted to send it across on email. Right, so you've seen that made up now anyway. The quick option here now for creating a PDF from it is to select your SWF file, right click or I think it's control and click on your Max and open with Adobe Acrobat. Well you can open up Adobe Acrobat first and then open the file in Adobe Acrobat. I'm just trying to show the quickest way here. So um, you see that's your file path to and the pages. I'm using mum's computer at the moment. <laughs> but anyway, uh, enough of that. So we'll go on to these settings. So you see, changing these settings, you're best changing this to when the page containing the content is open. It saves you when you open it up, clicking on it to open it up. You disable this when the content is closed. Um, don't have to bother with these too much and I think that's all you have to do. Um, I did mention you have to show the advanced options. And anyway, there you go, just click OK and it will work through and open up this in your PDF viewer. OK, so the final stage is to then just save by clicking here and put the name of your file here uh, 
And that's a different one. I'm going to add on to Moodle for you later. So I'll just leave it as page flip, PDF, and save. And you can close that or minimize, and I'll just show you. I'll actually close it so you can see it opening up again. So there's a page flip PDF. You can open that up, and it'll open straight away in there. If you do zoom, you can see the edges again, like going up and down. Okay, how that works and helps you, and I'll leave you at that. Okay.